Let's talk about the 16 biggest keto mistakes that will block your progress. All right, number one, not reading labels. You end up eating a so-called keto-friendly something and it's not actually keto-friendly. Now, as you start doing this, you're gonna get better and better and you're gonna catch things and you're gonna learn certain things. But let's just start with the Atkins bars and shakes, okay? If you look at the ingredients, you'll find all sorts of things that are not just not keto friendly, but they're not healthy at all. They have this protein blend with soy protein isolates, which is really hard in the liver and it will increase your estrogen and it's GMO. So there could be traces of glyphosate, which is an herbicide. Then they put whey protein in there, which is the highest on the insulin index. And then sodium caseinate, which is not the best normal source of protein. But the combination of those is very, very inexpensive protein. All right. And then we have this thing called polydextrose. What the heck is polydextrose? It's a synthetic fiber, right? And they'll say that, oh, it's a fiber. So it's not going to increase insulin. And even the FDA approved it as being a dietary fiber. But the research is so new, and I know people who consume products like this, the results are not near where they should be, and they have bloating, and they have digestive issues. And so any of these new synthetic fibers, I just would recommend staying away from them. And then we have an ingredient, maltitol, which is the worst sugar alcohol. I mean, it's recommended for diabetics, but on the glycemic index, it's like a 52. And that's just like way too high. It's the absolute worst uh, so-called diabetic friendly sugar that you can consume. And I've done a video just on that one uh, sugar alcohol. And then they add vegetable oil, right? But what type of vegetable are they using? Soy oil, GMO, very cheap and very high in omega-6, which creates inflammation. There's artificial flavoring and they also add maltodextrin. Now on the glycemic index, maltodextrin is one of the sugars that is even higher than glucose is the worst sugar that you can consume. I don't know why they put it in their low carb keto friendly bars. And of course, then you have slim fast, right? I mean, they play both sides. They sell to people who like sugar and now they're getting into the keto market. So the first ingredient is milk protein concentrate. And of course it's not organic or grass fed cows guaranteed. They use canola oil, which is GMO. They also use maltodextrin, artificial flavors. I mean, I think they used to have a different uh, formula, but they've been uh, bought out. They use whey protein isolate, which is very high on the insulin index. And they use this other fiber called isomaltol oligosaccharides, IMO. And I used to recommend it for various syrups and different ingredients because it gives you that wonderful texture, but it's going to spike your blood sugars. So you do not want to consume anything with IMO. And then you have uh, other brands like Hilo chips. They have potato starch. That's not keto friendly. So if you see potato starch, tapioca starch, tapioca fiber, and soluble corn fiber, I would recommend not consuming it. I mean, even the soluble corn fiber, there's 10 different versions. Some have 40% sugar, some have 4% sugar. So you don't really know what you're getting. But even V8 now is putting the soluble corn fiber in their V8 so they can say it now comes with fiber. The fiber is not from vegetable, it's from this soluble corn fiber. Now, I just need to say this really quick. The study that they did with soluble corn fiber, and they said it will lower your blood sugars. Well, they're comparing it to glucose. So that's the control. So if you're comparing it to glucose, and it lowers your blood sugars more than glucose, then they can say it lowers your blood sugar. But they sometimes fail to mention that they're comparing it to glucose. So number one, very important, read the ingredients always, especially in the beginning so you get used to it. All right, number two, not looking at the serving sizes. There's a couple points about this. Number one, uh, maybe you look at the carbs in salad dressing and it says two grams of sugar, right? And that is per serving size, not per bottle. So it's like per teaspoon. So who would use one teaspoon of salad dressing on their salad? I might use six or seven or even eight. So you have to multiply the serving size by the sugars or the carbs to get the actual value. The other little trick that they use is it's called a roundup trick. Let's say a carb has point 
eight carbs. It's less than one, so they round it to zero. So if you increase the serving size, you could be getting a lot of carbs, but not knowing it because of this rounding little trick that they use. All right, number three, judging your success based on weight loss. Let's say you started the ketogenic plan and you didn't lose weight in the first week and you go, wow, it didn't work. I'm going to quit. What you have to realize is that the first fat that's going to be burned is the fat inside your liver. Okay. A really interesting study that shows that you can reduce 50% of your liver fat within the first 14 days. So your body is going to get rid of that before your belly fat. So you may not see much weight loss initially, especially since you have to get healthy to lose weight. The concept of get healthy, to lose weight is very, very, very important. You don't lose weight and get healthy. You have to get healthy, then lose the weight. And you might want to let that sink in because it's a heavy concept. It is something that is very opposite of what people have been telling you. Your whole life, they've been telling you to just lose weight so you can get healthy because obesity is a health risk. Well, actually it works a lot better if you just focus on your health because the weight will come off as a natural consequence of being healthy. And sometimes getting healthy takes a little bit longer, especially if you've been eating poorly your whole life. All right, number four, comparing your results with others like your spouse, not a good idea. It's very discouraging, especially if you're a woman and you're comparing your weight loss to men because uh, men don't have as much estrogen. And so women have estrogen and estrogen makes fat, especially around the hips, the buttocks, the thighs. So you can't really do a good comparison. All right, number five, not consuming enough salt. When you're on a ketogenic plan, um, you're gonna lose more salt. And if you don't add more salt, and I'm gonna recommend sea salt, not table salt, you're gonna feel weaker. You're gonna feel the keto flu. So add more salt to prevent those two big symptoms. All right, number six, the cheat day. I don't know whoever came up with the cheat day, but um, I'm not gonna recommend a cheat day on this plan. I mean, would you recommend a cheat day when you're married? Let me find out. Hey, honey, Karen, I had a quick question. Yeah. What do you think about this uh, concept of a cheat day for a marriage? <laughs> All right, there's your answer. Cheat days don't work in a marriage and they don't work in your diet. All right, number seven, you're doing too much or too little fat. Now, even though the ketogenic diet is about 75% fat, I found a couple interesting things about this that may help you. Initially, when you do the ketogenic plan, if you increase more fat so you can fast longer, uh, that's gonna help you. We're not trying to lose weight necessarily. We're just trying to fast longer. And that transition might only take like, I don't know, two or three days. When you start to get into ketosis and your appetite goes away and you're fasting longer and you're continuing to add all these additional fats like MCT oil, the keto snacks, the keto bombs are called, all the extra butter on top of the fat that comes with your protein, you may find that your weight loss is not as much as it should because if given the choice, the body will always burn the dietary fat before your own fat. So what you might want to do is not go low fat, but just not try to add all this fat to the meal and just eat the fat that normally comes with the protein and it will help you lose weight a bit faster. But if your metabolism is fast, just keep adding more fat because it's working. Realize this, that if something is working, don't change it, okay? If something is not working, change it. All right, number eight, you're eating too much protein. Too much protein can increase insulin and that can slow you down. Now, protein is the big variable, um, depending on your size, your metabolism, your age, if you're male, you're female, if you're working out. Um, but I wouldn't start doing high protein. I would definitely keep it moderate and moderate is kind of a, a broader definition. It could be between three to six to seven to eight ounces per meal of protein. So play it by ear, and I guess a, a real good uh, rule of thumb would be if you're female, consume the protein the size of the palm of your hand. If you're a male, consume double the protein the size of your palm. Okay, that's just a very general 
guideline. And number nine, this is very, very important. You need to do intermittent fasting with keto together, okay? You're not going to be able to achieve your weight loss goal without intermittent fasting. You're not going to achieve your health goals, most likely, if you're not doing intermittent fasting, unless you're extremely healthy going into this, which I haven't really seen that many healthy people, uh, especially recently. Number 10, I wouldn't put much credence into the urinary ketone strips, okay? They're called urine ketone strips. Why? Well, they're good initially, but realize as your body starts to burn more ketones, guess what? You're going to waste less ketones. So you're not going to see them in the urine. So guess what? You check your urine and you don't see any ketones. You think, oh, it's not working when it is working. Uh, the blood ketones are a much better way to test your ketones, but you really don't need either one. The way that you know that ketogenic diet is working is if your hunger goes away, if your cravings go away, and then you start seeing some of the other benefits with energy, cognitive, weight loss, mood elevation. Those are the true indicators that it's working. All right, number 11, giving up when actually it's working. You start the plan and then you find that you're, you're expecting certain results that don't happen and you say that didn't work when in fact it was working. Well, let me just give you an example. Um, there are a lot of people who lose the initial water weight and then they plateau. And then they might not lose weight for a while or they might lose one pound a week and they don't realize that the most a person could lose if they're healthy is two pounds. The average amount that a person will lose is one pound. That's normal. And so they're expecting something like five pounds when that's not realistic. And so one pound weight loss per week is actually not, not too bad. It's pretty good. But and some people, they may have to get healthy first and their stomach starts shrinking. Their clothes are looser. Why? because they are growing more muscle tissue. And if we compare the weight per volume, the same volume of muscle to fat, muscle is heavier than fat. So they might not lose weight because they're growing muscle, they're healing because of all the growth hormone, but they are shrinking because the fat cells are getting smaller. All right, number 12, and I think I already mentioned this, but you're changing something when it's working. You never want to change anything if it's working. Just ride the wave. When you evaluate someone, you're basically comparing what they did before to what they did now. And you're looking for any changes that occur. And that can give you important information to know if you should change something, revert back to something, or strengthen something. If you found by adding intermittent fasting to your keto plan doubled your results, then you would keep that going. If you found that your results stopped as soon as you started adding these Atkins bars, then you need to omit those things. All right, you got that? Okay, 13, eating when you're not hungry. Okay, you don't wanna do that because you're burning fat. Your body's eating its own fat. And so many people are in this habit of eating that they just routinely eat. I mean, everyone else is eating. Why shouldn't they eat? So really pay attention to if you're truly hungry. Now, there's a couple little points to this. In the morning, especially eight o'clock in the morning, you have this spike of cortisol and you may find that your hunger goes up because of this other hormone, but you shouldn't eat because your energy didn't drop. You feel okay. You just might feel this wave of hunger or your stomach starts growling. That should go away. So we want to differentiate between true hunger where you need to eat and maybe just your body going through these hormonal cycles where it, it triggers hunger. And the way to differentiate that is if you have a hunger and you ignore it and it goes away, then you know it's not really time to eat. But let's say you try to ignore it and it persists, okay? That means you need to eat. Or let's say that you feel weak when you're hungry. That means you need to eat. And so that's just a really important point. All right, number 14, and this is another important one your estimation of effort or your estimation of time. You have to realize that if you take someone who starts keto and let's say they're 35 or 40 years old, they've eaten poorly for 30 to 40 years, okay? Now they're gonna start this keto plan. In their mind, they're thinking, 
I'm going to just turn everything around in one to two weeks. They have severe insulin resistance. Okay. I mean, like really bad. I just want to let you know from just a lot of experience in this area, usually the estimation of effort is a lot more than what the person thinks. The estimation of the time it takes to reverse insulin resistance is usually a lot longer than you think. And so if you go into this, having this unrealistic expectation or this, this thought that, wow, it's going to happen really quick and it doesn't, you're going to be very frustrated. It's much better if you have your estimation a lot longer. So that way you set yourself up for success because you're going to stick with it a lot longer. I mean, some people that have diabetes that are doing this, uh, it takes a year or two years to reverse this insulin resistance. It's just the truth of what it takes. I mean, so what? It's going to take time. The bottom line is there is a way to eventually improve this. But the cool thing is you're, you're going to see progressive improvements and you can always improve things. Okay. You can always speed things up. All right. Number 15, I kind of already covered that, um, but there's a difference between hunger and your time for eating. And I think the best indicator is if you're feeling fatigue or you're feeling, you know, dizzy or lightheaded or weak, you need to eat. Number 16, another really important one that people really don't understand is all it takes is a very tiny bit of carbohydrate to block your weight loss for a longer period of time. In fact, this was in guidance physiology and I've done videos on this. It takes a small spike of insulin, which is triggered by carbohydrate to block your fat burning. So let's say, for example, you consume a piece of bread or a half a glass of wine. Just realize that that can block fat burning for 24, 48 hours. So I'm just telling you this because if you're doing this program and you're not 100%, you're sort of doing it. And let's say every other day you're doing carbs and you're not seeing results, then you know why. Now, especially if you went hog wild drinking all this alcohol, let's say on Friday night, chances are you're not going to be back into ketosis until Monday or even Tuesday. All right. So now that you have that, there's another really good video that I want you to watch on the acceptable liquids on keto. Check it out here.